Hello and welcome to the Horoscope Vault, a podcast that explores a particular dimension of reality that is hidden from everyday awareness, and that is astrology. Whether you are a believer or not, a newbie or a pro, this podcast is about looking at astrology practically, delivering the symbolic meanings more formally without too many spiritual or ambiguous words. It's about looking at astrology using degree theory through a quantum physics filter to try and get as pinpointed as possible. So if you are close to being done with this realm and ready to peek your mind into another vision of what could be experiencing life, or if you're just trying to gain an edge, then this show is for you. And if you're dubious about astrology, if you're unsure, you could find clarity by the end of just one episode using the info shared to decide on your cosmic stance altogether. I'm Charlie, an associate member of the American Federation of Astrologers and astrology reader for radio's The Bob and Sherry Show. This episode is specifically for the movement of Venus into Virgo, looking at the five main challenges of this transit. So Venus moving into Virgo is said to be a few things, and one of those things is fussy. Venus, as a planet, is lavish, luxury, and then the sign of Virgo is particular and detail-oriented. So when you feel particular about something, being very specific in detail, for the purpose of quality and luxury, that could be deemed as being fussy or being picky. And if ever there is a time that it's correct to be fussy and to be picky with purpose, it's during this Venus in Virgo transit. So think of planetary shifts from one sign to another as a symbol and the way that the planet's symbolism has been determined is quite interesting. There's astrotheology with the relation of planets to gods, which seems to be the story that the movement of the planets is told through. But looking at it slightly differently, Uranus was discovered in 1781, for example, and they find this planet, its path of orbit was a bit wacky and wild in the sense that it wasn't taking the expected path. And so the astroscience guys who discovered it were like, whoa, this planet is rebellious because it's not doing what they thought it would do. And right now in astrology, we deem any Uranus transit as an indicator of areas of potential rebellion. So it was an observation from the astroscience peeps who said, you know, this rebellious planet isn't doing what we thought it would do. And that happened to correlate with particular experiences on Earth when Uranus did a thing. So Uranus is currently in Taurus and Taurus pertains to money. Rebellious behaviours with money have been seen during this Uranus in Taurus transit, which began May 15th, 2018. And it finishes July 6th of 2025. So there's the idea that the orbits and the movements or properties of each planet correlate to things happening on Earth in terms of behavior. The planets were seen as gods. They're in the place that humans put gods in that sense. And I don't like weaving religion into astrology. I like the more sciencey approach myself. But you can see these nuanced connections between planets and gods. Big giant sized things in the sky that people look up to that environmentally influence experience. It's really quite fascinating. It's interesting because some humans are left brained dominant, for example, and those might be the people who tend towards science a little bit more. The people who look at the movements of a planet with pattern recognition saying that that doesn't act like I would expect it to act. And then there are the people who are right-brained dominant, who may be more intuitive and curious, who may understand evolutionary changes in the form of stories. This is where we get our 
Roman gods, Greek goddesses, all the different mythology and theology. And it's kind of like this ongoing battle between science and religion or science and belief systems. Science itself is based on observation and a certain type of reasoning within parameters. And then belief systems are based on human beings being able to access deeper levels of information beyond vision. So symbolism can be derived from observing the actions of a planet and understanding its specifications as it moves in existence. And that's the left brain. Or it can be done through stories of history where symbolism is derived from the actions and circumstances going on on Earth and what people saw when they looked up into the skies. So this planetary shift of Venus into Virgo through an astrological lens, through metaphysics, through blending science and beliefs, would mean that all things Venus, like love and money and food, become under the influence of all things Virgo, which is very practical, methodical. It is work-focused and health-centric. So you might approach relationships with a bit more practical and analytical mindsets. You might be keen on improving communication, addressing issues with a problem-solving attitude, looking for practical solutions to any challenge that could be occurring in your relationships of just any kind. This is agreements and disagreements between yourself and another. This transit could bring fashionable change. The Venus things touched by Virgo themes can lean towards practical beauty. So I would expect to see a surge in clean beauty product sales or even the creation. And if clean beauty as a brand, a project or a product is something that you want to get into, then the next three weeks is perfect for creating and birthing and raising a clean beauty brand or a clothing brand if that's your thing. I would expect what is stylish in terms of furniture will go through a change. All kinds of style will go through a change. This might be like a style season shift. Virgo is also the health conscious sign. So you may feel a little bit more motivated to improve your health and your well-being with a focus on practical and effective strategies, not just lifting a weight a bunch of times and hoping for the best, but actually finding out and playing around with how much mind-muscle connection when weight training can boost your gains. It's actually like magic if you can use your brain to activate muscles more while you're working out. During this time, you could also clean up your diet, adopt a more disciplined exercise routine, address any sickness and health issues with a very focused approach. You might enjoy and appreciate routines and rituals a lot more, sticking to specific times for things like meals and sleep. You might want to switch up your daily habits a little bit so that everything you do is a bit more valuable, clearing away the tasks and the things you find yourself doing that have little to no significance, the things that are wasted energy. When it comes to money, another Venus thing, budgeting and frugality win now. You might find yourself more tempted to create a budget, to revise a budget. Venus in Virgo all around just encourages careful planning, practical financial management. It's a very good time to track your expenses, to set new financial goals, to focus on spending money more wisely. You might prefer to make cost-effective choices and avoid unnecessary purchases and just seek out the best deals and discounts. And looking at the aspects Venus makes during its stint in Virgo, there are five main points to be mindful of. Number one, Venus in Virgo squares Jupiter in Gemini. As a theme and experience. This is a challenging moment where making decisions that might feel restrictive are what actually brings benefits. So it's a time to examine your current situation and look for opportunities to address issues or obstacles by restricting something on purpose. 
even when facing adversity, you can maintain a resilient attitude and avoid defeat by turning challenges into growth, by limiting certain things. So if you seek to get something under control between now and August the 29th, then you come out on top of this challenge and turn it into a win. Number two, Venus in Virgo opposite Saturn in Pisces. This is a challenge about examining your financial situation, your material situation, and identify any influencing factors causing a problem in the form of other people. No one can make you spend and no one can make you save and no one can make you value certain things. You will always like what you like, but you can be influenced This is about examining your current circumstances financially and materially, identifying any factors that could be causing problems. But here's the clincher. These problematic behaviors or viewpoints where it comes to finances and material things are not yours. These are behaviors and beliefs and values in the material world that have been imprinted into you through any number of avenues. It could be family influence. Are you carrying down traditions of how to manage money, how to manage life? It could be advertisements, any number of the billboards or internet ads, TV ads, radio ads that you see and hear that encourage you to behave in a certain direction. The challenge is to take a step down from thinking that the way you currently do things is the only way or the best way. This is a message of gracefully accepting your current status as a result of your current behaviors. And then if you do or don't enjoy the place you are within that, then it's time to surrender to learn from someone else who may have more experience and more knowledge. This is about finding an alternative way to manage the material and valuable things in your life. And looking at Venus things, this is about finding a different diet. It's about finding a different method of saving, of budgeting. It's about exploring your options regarding making an income. And this is not something to think that you already have the answer to. Take a look at people who have done things successfully that you wish to do. And Google or your chosen internet search engine, look for their methods. Look for things they have said about how they manage things their way. This attitude of exploring another option will help you gain valuable insights and grow from the guidance of other people. The third challenge of this transit is Venus in Virgo, square Mars in Gemini. This is about recognizing and hanging around in some emptiness. Usually, you may avoid emptiness, you may avoid the lower feelings, but sometimes it's these feelings that motivate you to seek change. Spirituality teaches gratitude, which is very, very valuable. But the sense that something is not enough is also what stimulates your ambition to find deeper meaning and more quality. So this challenge is about letting yourself feel empty materially. This refires up the goal to pursue prosperity and wealth and healthiness with the idea of satisfying all your needs in that area. Acknowledge your emotions of emptiness. Understand, accept the feelings without judging yourself for feeling that. It's simply that feeling empty is a sign that something in your life needs attention. So reflect on what might be causing those feelings. Is it stemming from unfulfilled goals, a lack of purpose, unmet needs? And then use this as a powerful way to fuel personal growth and achievement. You can turn these feelings into a positive force. You can create a plan. It might give you the drive to break down your goals into actionable steps. And having a plan 
can help you feel way more in control, less overwhelmed, and more focused on the end result. You can use visualization. Imagine the kind of fulfillment that you'll achieve every step of the way closer to your goals. And this helps you stay motivated and focused. The challenge would be between letting the empty feelings consume you or channeling these empty feelings into constructive actions. The fourth dynamic with this Venus in Virgo transit is Venus, Trine, Uranus and Taurus. This is the capability to take a different perspective on board. This is about being open-minded to other people's inputs, other people's way of doing things in order to generate material growth. This is, by degree, a somewhat superficial aspect, but it's about being willing and able to suspend all ego-related responses and to try another way of achieving something just with the goal of finding something that works. The challenge here is not doing this. As a trine can be quite a lazy aspect, it could mean that once you've found the idea of a concept that works for you, something that you want to try, it's about actually doing it. It's too easy to think that by reading or learning something new, it will naturally integrate. You still have to put the effort into the actions to get the results out. The fifth dynamic of this transit is Venus in Virgo opposite Neptune in Pisces. In the pursuit of material success, it is normal and it's also common to encounter these kind of trade-offs. So towards the end of this Venus in Virgo transit, around August the 20th onwards, this time frame emphasizes acting selflessly without expectation of personal gain. It's a one-sided trade-off. And the trade-off is that all the good stuff that you do now, it might not pay off immediately, but it will pay off at some time. And timing is a big part of this. The positive effects of an approach that you're taking without expectations, doing that now, is the start of effort required. Take part in actions that bring you benefits that aren't necessarily immediate. True results manifest when you continually act with genuine intent. And in this case, timing is everything. This is the idea of delayed gratification. You can kind of understand this in terms of the gym. You go to the gym, you don't see the immediate physical results. It takes time for that to happen. And something that might make this easier to deal with, based on the idea of timing, is that all the things that you put the effort into now that do not bring immediate results are likely to pay off around October 15th of 2024. And the reason is, this is when Venus makes a trine with Neptune. So it's the results then, October 15th, 2024, of the efforts and overcoming the challenge now, August of 2024. So that is just under two months away, where if you start doing something completely different now, learning a fresh approach to something Virgo, to something Venus in Virgo, which is being cautious with spending money, being good with money, being organized with your diet, meal prepping, health-focused self-care, a dedication to finding work that you love. Then, in under two months, things in that area will be working for you so perfectly, it will almost feel like a dream. So in conclusion, between August 5th, 2024 and August 29th, 2024, this time is about making decisions that might feel restrictive initially. It's about carefully examining your current circumstances financially, materially, nutritionally, and in your working life to identify any factors that may be causing problems. It's about recognizing the areas of life where you could feel a little bit empty, it's about letting yourself feel that emptiness because it's that which will generate a hunger within you to make change. 
It's about exploring alternative methods that other people have had success with that lead you to your desired outcome. And in doing and sticking to all of those things, overcoming these challenges, you could see benefits show up around October 15th, 2024. Happy Venus in Virgo transit and until next episode. Bye.